G'day folks, Rich Buddhist from Brighter Days Christchurch, New Zealand with a tutorial of how you can use Power Automate and Power Apps to join SharePoint lists together and create Excel files with them. Um, use case would be if you've got relational kind of tables, one to many, parent child, call it what you will, um, set up in SharePoint and you need to pull it out into one, one file for easy data manipulation. There are other ways to do this with Power BI or just exporting both files into Excel from SharePoint and then joining them um, you know, using a pivot table. So you can do it that way, but this way just shows you how we can do it in Power Apps, Power Automate, because we can, and we're going to show you how. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can proceed with exporting CSV files. Um, there's a different technique to this one where you can, you can send a big mass of data from Power Apps into Power Automate, um, which works great as long as the data is not too huge. Um, if you have information that stretches over what you'd call a single page in Power Apps, um, then you'll find that your workflow may fail um, just because of the pagination. It doesn't seem to render the collection very well when you send it through to Power Automate. So this technique does work where we can extend out the amount of items that can be queried in SharePoint much bigger beyond the uh, amount of items you might be able to get from Power Apps. Um, and so we basically have a SharePoint structure, parent child lists, um, linked together by an ID or a unique identifier. We have Power Apps showing the gallery. Um, we can filter that gallery, then we can then call Power Automate, which will then go and query SharePoint. Um, and SharePoint will then pull in an array of information um, that we can then populate. And then I can use um, my data operations in Power Automate to create a CSV file. Uh, and then I can use that CSV file to create, sorry, to, to create an actual file in Excel and then respond back to Power Apps with that file. Um, so quite a simple method, but good um, if you need to be able to show exporting of content out of your app, but you don't necessarily want to go into SharePoint, you want to just keep them in the UI of the app. So let's step through the structure of what we have. Just minimize that. Um, so I've got my little hazard app, which exists. Um, just a basic way. Imagine the use case here is you're a health and safety administrator and you want to track your operators in the field. What are they recording each day? And how many hazards are they finding? What you need to take action with them, that sort of stuff. Um, so you go into your, your hazard by operator, and I can see on the 19th, I was out there and I found four hazards at the Contoso Art Gallery. Um, and then the MVP handler was doing work on other days and I found single items. Uh, and so what we've got is basically, this is a gallery of two galleries. So my main hazard art art gallery, uh, which is just viewing a SharePoint list called Hazard Register Archive. Um, and then inside that gallery, I've nested the Hazard Archive Items, which is a uh, fluid type gallery. It's filtered against the Hazard ID of the parent inside it. So this um, is a hidden sort of field. Um, this item ID, I could use um, this item ID, I've used the value, just a, a hidden field here to do that. You could do it the other way. It's just don't worry too much about that. Uh, basically, I've got a nested gallery is the main thing to know, and then the data sources to show you them. There is my hazard register archive coming out of SharePoint. It's five items. Um, the ID is the important one. And then in the hazard items archive, you can see there's a ID. Those are the four rows that we can see in that nested gallery, and there's other ones there. Okay, and so to show you how this plays out, I can just basically see this information I want it. If I want to export all of it, I just push export gallery through this area here. We're going to query Power Automate. Now we're going to go off and send the query to it, build an array, and then as quick as that, it comes back. And so I've got now a CSV file with all of the information that's come through. Now you will need to check. Um, I haven't done it for this one, but you will have to check your special characters that may come through and probably replace or filter them out either in Excel or um, as you do the operation from SharePoint, just so you know. Um, and let's show you how that worked, and then I'll show you how you can then filter by just basically calling me or going for a specific date, reduce the amount of items in the gallery and still use the same power automate function to get back just what you need. All right. So the flow or the power automate, it's a power apps trigger. The first step you're going to want to do is build an array. So it's um, as simple as basically add an action and then just type in the variable or 
area and then you'll find here increment the variable or sorry initialize a variable not that one sorry about that folks don't do that but yeah, we need to initialize the variable so let's just do that again initialize the variable when you initialize a variable you'll get options here and you want to select array and you want to give it a name okay let's just do that because I don't need that bit so what I've done there I have my hazard items in an array and then I go and get my items from my SharePoint list so that's my, my site collection URL and my list that I'm using if I show you under advanced options I am using a power apps um, action as well to filter uh, which I'll show you next um, if I send that blank then the filter is it invisible this just doesn't filter anything just brings back all of the items in this list and then I do an apply to each so for every item I come out I get when I get items I have an apply to each and I get the hazard items that are related to each of the parent register items and so in that one I basically call the same site collection calling hazard items archive and then I don't need to use a power apps action here. I can just basically say hazard ID equals hazard ID because in my um, hazard item, I have a hazard ID here. And I've also got a column here, which is called hazard ID, which is somewhere, which I've probably hidden, but it is essentially the ID that exists here in the archive. Okay, um, let's just make sure we do have a hazard ID so that we can prove everyone that it's there. Yeah, so there's one called hazard ID and let's move them up. It's the same, basically um, the IDs could be different if because I'm doing it, this is an archive and I copy files in from the main register into the archive, so the ID of the SharePoint list item might be different to the actual hazard ID, which is why we use the hazard ID. Okay, back to the workflow. So once I've got all the items from the hazard items and linked up to the get items of the hazard register, I do another apply to each within the parent apply to each, so it's apply to each two. In here, I am using the variable action of append to array variable. Okay, and so then you're going to, going to drop a little bit of JSON there, but it's not scary at all. All you have to do, if I zoom in, so everyone can see, I've only got one array in this workflow, so it's only always ever going to be hazard items. If you had others, then you can select the one you needed. Um, and to do this, all I need to have is a squiggle at the top and a squiggle at the end. And then I want to have um, title or column, a row of titles in my CSV file. So what I've done here is I've, I've put what I want, so ID in speech marks and then a colon. And then I can then just use my dynamic content to get the information I want to populate my array with. And so, and then have a comma at the end and just step through all of them that I want. Um, and then move, they'll basically link through, grab every item in the hazard register and put them into this array and I can work with it. Now, because I've done two, I've kind of get, let's just zoom back out again, I've done get items and a get, um, get items to or get items from the register. So I've got down here, site hazard control, they're in the apply to each two title, apply to each two hazard, so they're equivalent to this hazard control and that's the title, so that's the information coming in from there. And then I've got my date submitted, employee phone, employee name, which I get rid of that dynamic content thing. Okay, um, let's click somewhere else. It disappears. Disappear. Okay. Um, ID title employee. They're coming from my main apply to each. So I've got the apply to each. So that's the parent, and that builds the first part of the CSV. And then the child is this last three cells here. And apply to each two. But just helping you get through it so that's what you do but all you do is append to array variable name your variable and put in your little JSON snippet and then it will happily loop grab everything you need and then to make sure you get larger numbers you want to basically jump into your settings on your get items and turn on pagination I've done 2000 but you can go bigger if you want to um, depending on how often you need to run this by um, and how much information you want to extract back, but then you can go big if you need to. Let's cancel that. So once I've built my array, the next step is to create CSV table. Now that is under data operations in Power Automate. Um, if I just do CSV, it's 
right there, the first item. So it's real easy to find, grab that. Um, I'm not going to add that again, I've already got it. There's only one thing you need to worry about in this, is you basically drop in your variable, which is your array that you've built. Real easy. And then from there, let's create a file. Um, I am giving it a name here um, inside of um, my shared documents library. Um, and my search mode, basically where I want to save the file to and the output for the file content is from here. Right? So here's the create CSV output. So it's real easy to create a file from here. Um, and then I could use yeah, OneDrive or do some other stuff if I want to make it into a PDF or something, but at the moment I'm going to keep it as a CSV. So I just got to remember to give my file a name and then do .csv at the end of it. Um, in this particular workflow, I'm also sending an email. Um, if you want to send an email with the attached file, this is using mail, but the same for Outlook. You expand the advanced options, go to your attachment and your attachment file name, and you've basically got your file content from, it will, like Power Automate will know, there's only one action, one thing you can put into file content, attachment. And then the name file of the name of the file to basically the name of the file we just made that one. And then I respond back to Power Apps with a text response um, completed. It's true, it's, it's a trigger that I need to use in Power Apps to allow Power Apps to know that the file has been built and then dynamically open up that file within or download it from um, the document library. So that's all you need to do for. Um, creating a CSV file that you can then save into SharePoint and then respond back to Paraps. Now to get the response back to Paraps, let's show you that. So, <coughs> excuse me, on this button, the export gallery button, I've got a few different things happening. So let's just pause it and copy this. Um, these are all the various steps inside my Power Automate. And if I click them, you can see I've got a few things going. So I've got that What's my file name? What's the file content? I need that because I'm going to use it um, in the workflow. And then who am I going to send the email to? Who's in the email body? I reference the name. And then this last one here, search query text, is if I want to send a filter query to that Power Automate to just return only a specific subset of information from the SharePoint list, which we'll show in a second. But to send a response back to Power Apps, create yourself a variable, so this one's called bar CSV success. So I basically set that to be the outcome of my workflow dot completed. Um, it will always be lowercase uh, when it comes back, um, rather than a capital, which we have down in here. Completed. This is what you there, dot completed. And then what I then do, so that's going to respond back with a completed, and then it's going to come back as true. Um, which is the value that I send it, text true, not, not a boolean, just text on that one. Um, I could do a boolean, but I'm going to just do text on there. Um, and then, so basically, I do a condition then if my variable is equal to true, then I launch um, actually a dynamic URL that I build with the name of my file. So, this first part um, in my app, I built um, a con. A context variable which I know the name of my site URL. It's useful if I'm exporting um, from one site collection to another, it will be able to work out what's, what site it's supposed to go and query to get the document from. Um, and then it's, I know it's in the shared documents. Um, I could make all of this dynamic if I needed to, but at the moment I know it's going to be there. I know it's going to start trace hazards and then have the email of me um, in it. All right, so that's, that's that one. Um, now let's do something different. So let's filter this gallery and then export the gallery as well. So we'll export the filtered results. Okay, so in one of built I've got two ways of filtering here. I've got a search box which I can type in a search uh, and I've got a filter so let's show you those. So I can look me up um, and then that's going to basically query um, all the items created by me, possibly. I just click apply and I'll do it. Um, and obviously, this is an awesome demo because it's just disappeared. So let's just quickly refresh. I'll do it because it's a nested gallery. If I was playing this, the actual player would be working. But let me just refresh my data source and then you'll see that come back to life. There we go. Cool. So what I've 
got here, this is just helper text to show you what I'm doing, so what I'm going to send to Power Automate. Um, if I clear that, um, everything comes back, and obviously that thing disappears again, which is great. Um, which is awesome. Okay, I won't do that again because it'll just confuse everybody. But the important thing here is I can build a dynamic search query. Um, and what I'll do is um, show you that. Okay, so I've got a search box, an operator, and a date field, right? So three different things I can query off. And then I've basically built a dynamic string of text, which I'm going to send into Power Automate to then filter um, my SharePoint gallery with or my SharePoint list with. Um, so first up, if everything's blank, so I'm not applying filters, when I click apply, I apply a context variable called apply filters, and then the, the start is false. Um, and so if my search box is also blank, then send the filter empty, so we just send this bit. Okay, so then, but if my search box is not blank, um, I can't, I've set up a, a clear, so I, if I'm trying to, if I type something in the search box, then the filters clear themselves, and it's the opposite way around, so, so we know. Um, so basically, so I know that if I've got something in the search box, then the string of text that I want to send is this piece starts with employee name. Now that's a column inside of the SharePoint list, employee name, and then a comma, and then the um, the, the information that's inside the search box text. That's the search text trace. Um, and then so that I can send that to Power Automate, I'll make sure I close that out at the end with a little single speech button and a close bracket. However, if I am using filters, then I've got three steps to check. Um, I did try this doing it more dynamically, but I found that the date field wasn't working great. Um, so I've, I've split it to three. So basically got, if, I, if I've if i filtered my name and a date, then I do start with employee name, which is employee name in the search, in, sorry, in the filter. And then because it's OData in SharePoint, I do add date time submit equals, and that's the date that, that I'm using in the, the, the um, date picker. Um, just the date, not date time. And then stepping through that, then if my, obviously, if this first operation fails, so to, one of the fields will be blank and one will be empty. So then I can just go through logically, so is the date field not blank? If it's not blank, then basically that's another column inside SharePoint, date time submitted, EQ um, equals, and then the filter from the actual. Um, it's a date type there, so we don't have it in little single speech marks. Whereas if we're not searching on date, we're searching on a user, then or a text field, then this column here, employee name, is a text field. So it starts with the employee name inside a bracket. And I'm using starts with because you know, an end user is not going to type the full name of the employee. They're going to basically type John rather than Jonathan or Rich rather than Richard. Um, and then they're going to get results back and they can always refine that filter if they need to. But basically we get inside of a starts with clause, open bracket, employee name, comma, and then single speech mark, the value of the search box, single speech mark, close the bracket out. Okay. And that's how my filtering also works in my gallery. Same thing. So basically, if it's everything's blank, then just show me the hazard register archive sorted by ID ascending. However, if the filters have been applied, then work out this way I can do um, a simpler, super, like sort of conditional filter. So, and then I can say, I can run through both filters, don't need to check if they're blank or empty, basically do if it's not blank, then use the whatever the value of the filter is, and then the negative result, or if it's not, if it is blank, then just send true. Right, so it's basically filter has it register true and, it could be true or it could be something else, but basically because it's true, it just by bypasses the filter really easily, and then we've got a, um, a warning here just because of the delicable amount of items that we might get back. Um, in this example, we don't have to worry about that. Um, but basically, that's how we can filter it. Um, or I can basically, if I'm not using the applied filters, I'm searching. Then I basically search on employee name with the search trace. So let's show that in operation. Let's clear that out. And now we'll just do um, let's do that and then let's refresh. 
the state of source just because I'm not in the live app. So I've got four hazards that I should see back from Power Automate. And so what I'm going to do when I call this export gallery, I'm also going to send this snippet of text. And that's where, um, if I go back to the get items item, or action, sorry, that is what's going to be sent through. So it starts with which is what's going to be in this particular filter query, um, O data. Right, so let's turn that, export gallery. And we should just see four items come back in this Excel file. Here we go, all four. Um, nothing up my sleeves, everything's there as expected. Um, the key here is the O data and understanding O data in your filtering and your ordering, um, basically that. So O data, there's a whole bunch of different web articles out there um, to, to, to go and explore. Um, the main thing I've learned using O data is to know if it's a text field, you've got single speech marks, um, and you use things like AND or EQ uh, rather than equals um, and, and double ampersands. And if it's a number or date, it doesn't have any speech marks around it. So that's what you've got to remember pretty much. And you can do a lot of nested uh, filters. I've got another clip on how you can use this to filter the, who created a file. So you could use that if you wanted to look up a you know, specific person type, complex field type. But if you can get your head around O data and you're using it for filtering, then you can open up a whole bunch of cool stuff inside of Power Automate to send queries through um, from your Power Apps. Or it could just be. Um, from SharePoint, you can call Power Automate directly from there um, as an action. Um, you, know, you don't have to go into Power Apps to do it, but it's cool if you can because it kind of can present a nice uh, looking interface that's filtered to just what you want to show your end users. Um, and then they can do stuff with that, uh, that um, view, such as export, um, to take the data further and do things with it. Um, so, just to recap, key thing is things to be aware of, use the data operations, create CSV file, initialize an array variable, populate that array variable or append with basic JSON. And then that will then, it just takes the first row of all these text fields. So if we go back to the Excel files, it doesn't have ID and then all these items, then ID again, it just says it has ID title at the bottom the top and then all the different unique items under it. So super easy. Um, and then do a response back to Power, power Automate, sorry, Power Apps, um, and then receive that data back. And then if you're going to go down into the filtering option, you build yourself out a dynamic um, clause that you can send um, as part of your Power Apps trigger, a Power Apps button into your Power Automate. And you can make that whatever you want. But yeah, making it the um, starts with or ME or equals or GE, oh, sorry, GT greater than, LT less than. Um, build that up as much as you need. Try and keep it as simple as possible. Um, and if you find, I guess, if you find people want to do too much with that, send them straight to the chef list because then they can do whatever they want there as well. Um, and more complex, but refined if needed, but you can go wild if you want to. Um, I hope this has helped. I hope this has been useful. Uh, let me know um, any questions on how to do it. Um, just please reach out. I will try and write up an article that explains this with some source code in it and make it easier. But any questions, just yeah, please reach out. Happy to hear from you. Bye.